Hello, everybody. Um, just a recap of where we're at right now. So you should have started the spiral reviews for quarter one, those Google Forms, on Friday. Today you're going to watch this video lesson on angle proofs. And then your job is to finish those Google Forms to, um, for tomorrow, okay? And make sure you're showing your work on a separate piece of paper because um, you are going to be turning in um, your work for points, okay? So again, today you're watching this video lesson that I will link right here. Obviously, if you're watching this, that's how you got here. And then you're finishing those spiral reviews that were Google Forms. All right, so we are working with angle proofs today. So um, we've used these properties since the very beginning of our times with proofs, right? Adding, subtracting, multiplying. Um, those reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties still hold true. But now we have a whole new list of reasons that involve angles, okay? So before we even get into those, let's just not forget things we already know, okay? So if we talk about these pictures, what kind of angles are these? I hope you're thinking vertical angles, right? And we know that vertical angles are equal. So that doesn't go away. We know that's true. Um, here we have a linear pair. We know linear pairs add to 180. Again, that's not going away, so but don't forget about that, about those things. These two angles here are complementary because they make that right angle. So again, they equal 90. Complementary equal um, angles equal 90 degrees. Then lastly, I'll be really impressed if you guys remember what this is. Um, this is denoting our two angles are congruent because this is an angle bisector, right? Angle bisectors cut angles in half and they give us two equal pieces, okay? So those are all things that you've learned before. Like those are already in your toolbox and now we're gonna kind of formalize them. So there's nothing really for you to write like there was in our last segment um, angle, or excuse me, our segment reference sheet, but um, I will probably have you draw some pictures, so don't glaze over these, okay? The definition of the congruence is similar to what it was like for segments, but um, instead of getting rid of like our, our segment bar, we're getting rid of that M. So if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, then I know angle A is congruent to angle B. So getting rid of that M and putting that congruent symbol, um, those are interchangeable, right? If you go either way, that's definition of congruence. Definition of an angle bisector, maybe you want to draw this in the margin, but you know that an angle bisector divides an angle into two equal parts. So again, here we have our big angle LKJ, and I'm splitting it into two equal pieces. Again, maybe not a bad idea to draw that picture there. Definition of complementary angles or two angles that add to 90 degrees. Or you go the other way. If I know that two angles add to 90, then they are complementary. This one's a little bit more self-explanatory um, since we've seen that one so many times. But again, not a bad idea to draw a picture. Similarly, definition of supplementary angles are two angles that have a sum of 180 degrees. They look like a linear pair or two angles that have a sum of 180 degrees are supplementary. Definition of supplementary angles. Definition of perpendicular. I hope by now you know that perpendicular lines form right angles. So if you're given two lines that form a right angle, then um, that would be definition of perpendicular. Again, if you want to draw a picture, here is an example. And we know that a right angle equals 90 degrees, definition of a right angle. Angle addition postulate, again, we've seen this a long time ago, probably the beginning of September. Um, our big angle, angle ABC, is made up of its two smaller parts, angle ABD and angle DBC. That is your angle addition postulate. Vertical angles, 
we are, um, they are congruent, so that's nothing new. We're just formalizing it. And I'm not so concerned if you know if it's a theorem or not. You could just say definition of vertical angle since we know that vertical angles are congruent. Again, here's a picture if you'd like to draw that. Complements theorem. This is kind of a unique one. If two angles form a right angle, then they are complementary. So if you're told two angles make a right angle, and they are complementary. Similarly, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So here we know we have a linear pair, then we know they add to 180. Congruent supplements, or excuse me, I'm ahead of myself. Congruent complements. If angle A is complementary to angle B and angle C is complementary to angle B, then A must be congruent to angle C. Does that make sense here, folks? If I have this little diagram here, I know that angle A and B add to 90, and I also know that B and C add to 90. Doesn't it make sense that these two angles have to be the same if they're both complementary to B? Hope that makes sense, right? They both have to be the same if we take away angle B from both of them. So congruent complement theorem, which is very similar to oops, our congruent supplement theorem, which doesn't seem like it's in my notebook file. Um, same idea though, folks. If two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then those two angles are congruent. Okay, I know I flew through that. I realize you're watching a video lesson and you probably glazed over half of that. And I'm sorry I'm not here today to teach it to you in person. But just like how we are doing segment proofs, the only way to get better at them is to just kind of lean in and dig in to the word, okay? So here, I think it'd be a great idea since you've seen something like this before, pause the video and see if you can use that reference sheet to pick up the right property. I'm just gonna roll through them, but again, you're not gonna learn if you're just copying what I write down. I think you should pause the video and try this on your own. So I'm hoping that you pause the video and now I'm going to go through these. So the first one, if angle A is a right angle, then the measure of angle A equals 90. Well, that's just definition of a right angle. Definition of a right angle, because we know right angles have a degree of 90 degrees. If the measure of angle P plus the measure of angle Q equals 90, then P and Q are complementary angles. Folks, definition of complementary angles, that's all it is. Don't overcomplicate this. I'm going to run out of room. If X is supplementary to Y and X is supplementary to Z, then angle Y is congruent to angle Z. That's our congruent supplements. If given this picture with angles one and two, then angles one and two are congruent. Well, that's definition of vertical angles. Our next one, um, if the excuse me, if angle M and angle N form a right angle, then M and N are complementary. That would be our complements theorem. Or I would honestly take definition of complementary to it. To me, if you can tell that the complementary angles add to 90, then you're fine. But this is technically the complements theorem. And then our last one, if given this picture where L is perpendicular to M, then angle one's a right angle, that should just be definition of perpendicular. Okay, so before we dig into the proofs like we did last time with our segments, 
we kind of break it up a little bit, so I hope it kind of eases us into the whole process. So it says, find the measure of angle 1 if the measure of angle 2 is 56 and the measure of angle JKL is 145. Justify each step. Okay, so if we're given the big angle and we're looking for one of the small ones, I'm probably going to start with our angle addition. So let's start with our big angle addition. So the measure of angle JKL equals the measure of your two smaller ones. Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two. Okay? And our reason for that, oh, I wrote too big. Angle addition. Well, now, since we know what some of these things are equal to, let's substitute in. So I know the measure of angle JKL is 145 is equal to, I don't know the measure of angle 1, but I know the measure of angle 2 is 56. And then when you replace something for something else, that's the substitution property. And now we have a pretty easy equation, right? We're going to subtract away 56, so we're going to get 89 is equal to the measure of angle 1. And that's a subtraction property of equality. So here's a good example as to why I have to be careful when you abbreviate. If I would have put just the sub property and the sub property, how would I know if I'm talking about substitution or subtraction? So if you do abbreviate, make sure you abbreviate it or give enough of the words so we know which property you are talking about. All right, let's try another one. It says angle six and seven form a linear pair. If the measure of angle six is three X plus 32 and the measure of angle seven is five X plus 12, find X, the measure of angle six and the measure of angle seven Justify each step. Okay, so I think we got to start at the beginning, right? I think we got to start here. Angle 6 and 7 form a linear pair. So we're going to do the measure of angle 6 plus the measure of angle 7 equals 180, since that's what we know linear pairs do. And that would just be definition of a linear pair. Okay, now do we know what 6 and 7 are equal to those angles? Well, we sure do, so now we're going to replace. Measure of angle 6 is equal to 3x plus 32, plus the measure of angle 7 is 5x plus 12 equals 180. And what did we do there, folks? We substituted in. Now we're going to combine our like terms, right? Add our x's together, our constants together. So you can put combine like terms. I'm going to put simplify. Now we'll just solve like normal. So we'll subtract over our 44. Subtraction property. Then we'll divide out, and I'm hoping you can get that x is equal to 17. And that was the division. But now make sure you answer the question. It says find x, which we just did, and then the measure of angle 6 and 7. So we're just going to have to plug in. So the measure of angle 6 is equal to 3 times 17 plus 32 which is equal to 83. Measure of angle 7, plug in 5 times 17 plus 12 equals 97. And double check, 83 plus 97, that is indeed 180. So we did good there, and there we go. Good work, folks. Okay, how are you doing? I hope you're doing okay. I wish I could see your faces. But here we go. Let's try our first angle proof. Again, we're just being a detective. We're just trying to figure out what property 
is being used to justify these statements, okay? We're not doing it all by ourselves. So it says given angle one and two are supplementary and two and three are supplementary, we want to show that angle one is congruent to angle three, okay? So that should hopefully kind of make sense in your brain. I know these two added together equal to 180. I know these two added together equal 180. And our goal is to show that angle one is congruent to angle three. I know it makes sense, but it's almost kind of hard to formulate in a proof. But here we go. So why is angle one and two, why are they supplementary? Well, that was a freebie that was given to us. So why can we say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 and the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three is 180? I'm hoping you're thinking because they are supplementary. So that's just definition of supplementary angles. Perfect. So now we have to use line two to get to line three. So why can I set angle, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equal to the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three? And hopefully you're noticing that they're both equal to 180, right? So if they're both equal to 180, I would know that these two things have to be equal, right? So that could either be transitive property or substitution. In this case, they're kind of interchangeable. I'm going to go with substitution. Substitution property of equality. Now, what happened from step three to four? Oh, ahead of myself. Nope. Why is the measure of angle two equal to the measure of angle two? That's just a reflexive property. Good work. Now let's use three to five. What's different between these two lines? We got rid of angle two. How did we get rid of angle two? We subtracted. Subtraction property of equality. So now we can say that angle one is congruent to angle three by the definition of congruence. Woo, good work. Okay, one more and then we'll be done, I promise. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. Okay, this last one would be a great time for you to maybe pause the video and see if you can fill this in on your own. Fill this in on your own. Maybe kind of decipher what the given means and what you're trying to prove. Okay, here we go. So it says DB bisects angle ADC. So I'm cutting angle ADC into two equal pieces. So I already know that angle one is congruent to angle two. I'm going to write that here on the side. This is my brainstorm. That's my definition of a bisector. What else do I know in this picture? Well, I hope you notice that we have some vertical angles, right? So I know angle one's congruent to angle three. So those are just some things that I know, right? Because angle one and three are vertical angles. So let's kind of come back to our proof and see if that helps us out. So what's nice is they already started it for us. It says DB bisects angle ADC, that's given. So now why is angle one congruent to angle two? Definition of a bisector, yep. Definition of angle bisector. Definition of vertical angles. This one's kind of goofy. I don't know if I would have went about it the same way the book went about it, but they just verbally state angle one and angle three are vertical angles. 
I honestly think step three could be skip. You probably could just go to step four, but since the book has it, we'll go with it. So now why is angle three congruent to angle one? Definition of vertical angles. Now they want us to use the transit property of congruence. So what two angles must be the same by using the transitive property? I'm going to underline them. So they're both equal to angle one. So what two angles are equal? Angle three is congruent to angle two. And just because they want to use a symmetric property, now we're going to flip the order so then it matches what we were trying to prove. Angle two is congruent to angle three. So really, I think, in all honesty, you could have did this step in two less steps because you really don't need to say this. And if you would have put angle two first on step five, you really don't need that step. But that's okay. It's good to see a different um, way of doing things. But I really appreciate you watching this video. I will be back tomorrow and we'll finish notes and start angle proofs. So please right now, finish your two spiral reviews um, for quarter one. And again, make sure you're documenting your work on a sheet of paper so you get points for all the work that you've done. Please be good for the sub and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.